What up gamers and welcome to the definitive 2023 top albums list. This is the only one that matters. Forget all the other publications, forget all the other peoples. This is this is this is the correct list right here. Forgive the loose scripting. I've not actually spent that much time ranking these or thinking about these too much. I've just written down a list of albums I liked, including some honorable mentions. And given that I haven't been uploading much recently, I'm going to give you an update at the very end of the video about how this channel is going to be looking like in 2023. All right, so I do have a top 20, but I'm going to go through some honorable mentions first. We're just going to go very quickly through the honorable mentions. First of all, Queen of Sheba by Angelique Kijo and Ibrahim Malouf. These are two world music heavyweights that combine together to retell the story of the Queen of Sheba, and it's as good in execution as it is in concept. We've got Topical Dancer by Charlotte Edigiri and Bodis Papool. Uh, this is just super fun and a super cheeky art pop, uh, very fun listen. Corey Henry's Operation Funk is a funky operation that will cure your funk withdrawal. Met My Eyes See the Future by Denzel Curry, honest reflections about his own state of mind and his own place in society. We've also got here Goodnight Dreamer by Dreamer Isioma. It's just great RNB. Check out Sunset Drive in particular. We're Not Here to Be Loved by Fleshwater is sort of Deftones inspired alternative metal. And if that doesn't quite sound like your thing, I promise you, uh, you will enjoy the gnarliest Bjork cover in Enjoy. Francesca Remigi's The Human Web. I did review this one in full. Uh, she navigates her personal and societal demons through some mind-bending avant-garde jazz. Shout outs to Junior Brother for the great Irish famine. It's some great off-kilter progressive folk. Lewis Cole's quality over opinion. It's funky. It's dirty. It's Lewis Cole. It's is just good. And it's great to hear how youthful and energetic Suede still sounds 30 years on on the album Autofiction. And finally there's Schwitz by Wolfpack which came out like a day or two ago which I'm enjoying quite a bit but I wrote this list before it came out so yeah. Alright next very quickly I want to mention some EPs that I found interesting. Weezer's entire seasons catalogue has been an interesting listen mostly because of the fact that some of it is brilliant and some of it is awful. If I've said it once, I've said it a hundred times, Rivers Cuomo balances that line between genius and bollocks like no other musician can. A new set of tracks from Pompoco, This Is Our House, very good, noise pop, yes, I like it, give me more. And the last three EPs are all from my home country of Luxembourg, which has kind of killed it in the, uh, I guess, EP section this year. We've got The Fun House by Francis Delirium. This is the darkest songwriting yet, and it's great. Turn Up Tun keeps fine-tuning his expertise in crafting trap bangers in the Luxembourgish language on the album Level Up. And then Sir Kama's Amuse Bush is some of the most forward-thinking, ambitious art pop I've heard all year. And that's it for honourable mentions, so I uh, guess we'll count down. We don't have a 20th spot, we've got a 21st spot. This is this is sort of tied between two albums that I couldn't decide which one I preferred. And they're both from the Belgian progressive metal scene that's been killing it this year. Specifically the records Colossal Gods by Cumbra the Impaler which I reviewed in full and Violate Consensus Reality by Psychonaut. Watch the review if you want my full thoughts on Cobra the Impaler's Colossal Gods. I will say that Violate Consensus Reality by Psychonaut uh, I have very similar feelings about. It's just gnarly. It's great progressive metal. I would say it's a bit dirtier in sound than the uh, Colossal Rock Gods record. And yeah that's the 20 spot. In the 19 spot we've got Moona's self-titled record which at first listen I absolutely hated. But then later on I saw it top more and more lists and I thought I've got to give this another chance. And I ended up really, really liking it. I think there's some really great synth pop in there. Some of the bass synth textures are very pretty. Favourite tracks on this are Anything But Me and What I Want. And honestly, I think it's time to get on the Muna train before they open up for Taylor Swift and inevitably their next album will be produced by Jack Antonoff and it's going to be awful. <laughs> so quickly, get on the Muna train now. In 18th place, I believe, we have uh, Duality by Luna Lee. Now, this is a record that I reviewed as well up there. If anything, this album has actually grown on me since I made this review. I still really like those orchestral arrangements. I think Trying is still one of the most beautiful songs I've heard this year. But yes, check out the full review. But in the number 17 spot, I've got A Light for Attracting Attention by The Smile. Again, this is one I reviewed in full. Check it out for my full thoughts on that. And another, and another, and another. Beatopia by Biebadubi in my number 16 spot. Again, I reviewed this one for my full thoughts on it. 
All right, now I can stop being lazy. In a number 15 spot, we've got Cheat Codes by Danger Mouse and Black Thought. It's an MCM producer combo that I'm surprised hasn't happened sooner because they just gel together so well. In the number 14 spot, I've got Marchita by Silvana Estrada. This has been my favorite folk album of this year. Uh, I think the vocals are beautiful, the guitar arrangements are great. Uh, my favorite track is Carta, I do like myself a track in five, and the vocal performance on that one is particularly good. Next one is another folk album, kind of. It's a really good melding of uh, Celtic folk and jazz. This is Maram by Matt Carmichael. It's also the last thing I reviewed in four months, so <laughs> go check out the link for my full thoughts on that. Next in the number 12 spot, we've got Spilly Cave's self-titled album. This is as good as bedroom pop gets. The songs are greatly written. The guitar parts are funny. You can tell the guy is having a great time making these tracks. But my favorite track on this has got to be Bingo. I like the switch between 4-4 and 3-4. Next, Little Sins is No Thank You, a record that I actually happen to find better than sometimes I might be introverts because I didn't really click with the latter that much. I definitely clicked with this one a lot more. My favorite track on this being Gorilla. I love the attitude. I love the flow. I love the wordplay. All right, here we go. Top 10. The only 10 records that matter this year. At the number 10 spot, I've got Giving the World Away by Hachi. I did mention this in some other reviews, but this record is really, really, really good. Uh, I like the callbacks to 90s dream pop. The sound design on this is so good. I really like the track Disenchanted, especially the move between the bridge and the final chorus. That explosion of sound is great. Next up, we've got Ling Wizard and the Kizzard Gizzard. And it's the album I feel people have forgotten because they released like three in October but what about that really good double album that was an amalgamation of all the sounds that they released in April Omnion Gatherum it's really really good the 20 minute epic dripping tap speaks for itself and honestly this is like as good of an entry point to King Gizzards as you're going to find at number eight uh, I'm gonna put in petrol girls baby wow this thing is angry this thing is raw this thing is brutal I love it it's probably my favorite punk record of the year there's tracks like baby I had an abortion and violence by design that are as cheeky as funny as they slap while also offering essential social commentary this overall social commentary that is present on this album comes that for me at a peak on the track fight for our lives with some of the most harrowing vocal performances i've heard all year and some of the most brutal soundscapes as well in the number seven spot i have put hellfire by black midi uh, obviously i think in the critosphere this one's been talked about enough already but what i will contribute is i think the track welcome to hell is genuinely the best rock song i've heard maybe this millennium just the blend of king crimson and cardiacs within that track is just so it's 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 perfect there's there is nothing wrong with that song i, I dare you to find something wrong with the track welcome to hell by black midi because you won't be able to find it in the number six spot there might be some recency bias on this one but this is agnes and hilda by patricia taxon this record is short but has patricia taxon's sort of signature slapped on it specifically her icy synths and the kind of way that she writes songs and on this record, I feel like she's given the best vocal performances I've heard from her. And the four song stretch between Barchi and With My Tale to the World is pretty much flawless. As someone whose interest in electronic music is admittedly limited, this has been the best I've heard this year. In number five, we have what I think is probably the funniest record of the year. This is Donda Esta El Jazz by Gili Poyaz. And yes, there may be a little language barrier to understand the humor, but it's definitely there. And I feel like it can be understood just through the musical performances or even the music videos. But if you want my full full thoughts on Donda Esta El Jazz, beep, 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 in, the, <laughs> in the number four spot is Nymph by Shy Girl. I, I can't explain why I like this thing so much, but it's sultry, it's cheeky, uh, it goes hard, there's plenty of bangers on this. Bangers like Schlutz and Nike have been in heavy rotation this year for me, but my favourite track on this has got to be uh, Firefly, which I feel is a really good modern spin on Garage. Next is one for people who really like crying, like myself. This th this one was made for us. This is uh, Ants From Up There by Black Country New Road. Wow! What 
what a follow up to the previous record and what a tragedy it is that Isaac has left that band uh, but I hope he is doing well outside of it. On top of the really really upsetting lyrics there's also these beautiful beautiful uh, orchestral chamber arrangements and uh, this is the final time I'll say it this video but uh, full review in the number two spot we've got I think is the best crossover blend of rock and hip-hop specifically punk and hip-hop this would be Bob Villain presents the price of life by Bob Villain this is raw all the way through the wordplay is great the flows are great the beats are great check out the track gdp for an amalgamation of what this entire record is about and for my number one spot i think i can tell a uh, little story if you like keep the word story in your mind because that was a hint of what the number one album is <laughs> so on new year's eve 2021 to 2022 uh, i've decided to uh, have for the first time a new year's resolution and my new year's resolution was to get way into hip-hop because i literally knew nothing about hip-hop in 2021 and now over my listening habits i've listened to up to probably more than 50 classic hip-hop albums and i feel so much better for it there's a lot of albums that you know i thought were brilliant but i didn't quite click with but there was also a lot of artists that i did click with uh, i think specifically i want to mention outcast a tribe called quest queen latifah uh, Mo's Death, chuck in Kendrick Lamar, the Fugees, the Roots within that list too. But this sounds mental, but the best hip-hop record I've possibly ever heard, or at least the one that's clicked with me most, and this could be coming from a place of hi lack of hip-hop head, head <laughs> or just general hip-hop ignorance, but I don't know why this record clicked with me so much. And it's by an artist that I discovered, of all things, from his feature in an Imagine Dragons song from an album that I sort of tore apart a little bit. Yeah. This is The Forever Story by Jid. I didn't like this guy's verse in that Imagine Dragons song. I mean, I didn't like the song overall, but the verse didn't salvage it. So when I actually listened to this record, I thought, okay, well, people are talking about it, so I'm going to put it on and listen to it. And it clicked like no other hip hop record has ever clicked for me. On top of his like masterful storytelling and lyricism, they are these mad flows on tracks like Louder 2 and Can't Punk Me. And being specific is almost pointless for this record because it is bangers after bangers after bangers after bangers after bangers. Is it the cohesive through line of storytelling? Probably. Is it the fact that Jid has amazing flow and can like speed up and slow down without you even noticing? Probably. Is it bangers? Is it just that this record is 15 bangers? Yes, probably. There's only so much I can say about this record from my perspective that will be useful. I think uh, what you're best off doing is actually listening to it in full. But before you do that, uh, let's do a little channel update. <laughs> I bet the stat for my average view duration on this video is just gonna go in this section. I am doing a master's course right now and I just don't have time to make these sort of long form videos. I've got a couple things that I'm scripting, I'm specifically editing still a episode of Stinkers and all the other videos in long form that I'm going to do are the ones that require a bit of a script and I'll sort of work on them very very slowly. I can't make any promises that they'll be uploaded frequently but what I am going to do if I can't do long form video reviews I can do short form re video reviews. So what you're going to see on this channel is me posting a short of every single album I listen to and my thoughts on it and I'll probably be cross posting so you can follow me on TikTok, uh, Instagram, uh, where I'll be posting TikToks and Reels, I think it is. Um, but yeah, that's that, that's it. That's me. That's 2023. Let's let's go. 2023, forever. 20. 